Billy Luna. Did you ever know any sports players or ref that fudge the rules a little bit and start betting on their own games? No, I wish I did. Let me tell you a little bit more about Joey and gambling. Skinny Joey Merlino, alleged Philadelphia Mafia boss, received a two-year federal prison sentence in Manhattan for his involvement in an illegal gambling enterprise. The Latin Casino. I've seen everybody there. For nearly two decades, the Latin Casino in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, stood as an emblem of glamour and excitement. Yeah. We used to go, me, Philip Narducci, we used to go see every show. Yeah. It was the best. We had that's, the, that's great. As a, young a table, kid. like, in, we had dead center front row. Skinny Joey Merlino mentions Philip Narducci, and he mentions Chicky Narducci. Let me tell you a little bit about these guys. Frank Chicky Narducci was born in South Philly in 1933 to Italian immigrant parents. Narducci's initiation into the realm of crime commenced at a young age when he became a trusted soldier and driver for the Philadelphia crime family. Of the men standing in this photo, Chicky Narducci killed Philip Testa. Then Salvi Testa killed Chicky Narducci. Finally, Nicky Scarfo killed Salvi Testa. And Sinatra came here one night to eat. So we came over there and he was in there with his wife, I think Jilly. All right, let me tell you a little bit more about Frank Sinatra and Jilly. Jilly Rizzo was an enormous man and Frank Sinatra's closest friend and aide. Jilly had deep mafia connections to Sam Giancana, Joe Fischetti, Joey Gallo, and various heavyweights in the Gambino crime family. You know, I at think one it, point, the mafia found out about it, allegedly, and then, you know, they, they started the getting out of his action. And they always blame us. They, the, they always blame the mafia. Fuck the mafia. Some YouTubers have said that Joey slipped up here and admitted to being in the mafia. We're going to talk about it. Please subscribe to the Billy Luna channel and like the video. Thank you. When Skinny Joey Merlino does an interview on Vlad TV or discusses topics on his podcast, The Skinny, Joey mentions a lot of people who are allegedly in the mafia. And Joey talks about a lot of alleged mafia-related situations. However, Joey doesn't say much about it, and he doesn't elaborate. As you know, what I do here is I show you the key moments of the videos featuring Skinny Joey Merlino. We watch them together. I pause the video and I explain the alleged mafia stuff to you through my commentary and mini documentaries that I create. Basically, I give you the history and background of the people and situations that are mentioned to provide more context. If you find Skinny Joey Merlino fascinating and funny, and you also like mafia history and content, you're going to love my videos. I've interviewed sports figures that have bet on their own games. Like, for example, Tim Donaghy, who is the NBA ref. He's from Philly. Uh, He's another rat. He cooperated. Yeah. Uh, do you know him personally? No, I don't know. Okay, let me uh, give you a little information about what Joey's talking about with Tim Donaghy. Notorious NBA ref Tim Donaghy received financial compensation from alleged members of the mafia for providing inside information about NBA games and making intentional miscalls on the hardwood. Tim Donaghy would later go on to snitch on many fellow NBA refs. Donaghy was later assaulted in prison by an alleged member of the mafia for being a rat. In the annals of professional basketball history, few sagas are as infamous as the Tim Donaghy gambling scandal of 2007. This seismic event reverberated throughout the NBA, shaking its foundations and igniting discussions about integrity and ethical dilemmas. At its core was the revelation of illegal betting and game manipulation, exposing the underbelly of the sport and leaving a lasting impact on its reputation. The scandal began with an unlikely partnership between Tim Donaghy, an NBA referee, and his childhood friend, Jimmy Batista. Seeking to exploit insider information for profit, Batista, a sports betting broker, devised a scheme that leveraged Donaghy's position as an official. Rather than directly altering game outcomes, Donaghy used his insider knowledge to influence bets on games he officiated, leading to significant financial gains from their illicit enterprise. However, their clandestine operation was exposed when the FBI intervened, launching an investigation that unraveled layers of deceit. Federal authorities uncovered the extent of Donaghy's involvement and in the intricate network of collaborators behind the scheme. 
Details emerged of Donaghy's intermediary, Tommy Martino, acting as a conduit for transmitting inside information to Batista. Faced with prison time, Donaghy ratted on numerous other zebras, NBA officials, for a more lenient sentence. Tim Donaghy pleaded guilty to federal charges related to the scandal. He was sentenced to 15 months in prison. Donaghy was assaulted in prison by an alleged member of the mafia as retribution for his being a rat. Did you ever know any sports players or or refs that became degenerate gamblers and started to kind of fudge the rules a little bit and start betting on their own games? No, I wish I did. Joey says, I wish I did. Let me tell you a little bit more about Joey and gambling. Skinny Joey Merlino, alleged Philadelphia Mafia boss, received a two-year federal prison sentence in Manhattan for his involvement in an illegal gambling enterprise. The sentence, the maximum allowable, came after Merlino pleaded guilty to transmitting gambling wagers across state lines, a charge reflecting his alleged 1990s-era reign in organized crime. Merlino's legal troubles began with a 2016 arrest in a health care fraud case involving over 40 defendants, where he faced allegations ranging from insurance overbilling to loan sharking and extortion. While most co-defendants accepted plea bargains, Merlino opted for trial, which concluded in a hung jury and subsequent acquittal. Throughout his legal battles, Merlino's defense emphasized Merlino's gambling addiction and peripheral involvement in alleged illegal gambling operations. Joey likes to bet. He freely admits it. Leave him alone. A man needs enthusiasms, for Christ's sake. Skinny Joey Merlino is banned from all Pennsylvania casinos following an altercation at Sugar House Casino in his alleged criminal history. Merlino has also been on New Jersey's casino exclusion list since 1988. Skinny Joey's history of high-stakes gambling, including alleged losses exceeding $200,000 and a 2001 racketeering conviction, are cited as reasons for the ban. Merlino's alleged association with organized crime and his involvement in the Sugar House altercation prompted authorities to act. Despite being sent petitions and refusing to accept them, Merlino's silence is deemed a waiver of his right to a hearing. The Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board added Joey to the exclusion list, joining over 500 other individuals barred from state casinos. As you all know, Joey now gives out sports gambling tips on his podcast, The Skinny. You know, I at think one it, point, the mafia found out about it, allegedly, and then, you know, they, they started getting it out of action. And- they always blame us. They always blame the mafia. What mafia? Skinny Joey Merlino refers to the mafia as us when he says, quote unquote, they always blame us. They always blame the mafia. Some YouTubers have said that Joey slipped up here and admitted to being in the mafia. Here is my take. This is not Vlad catching Skinny Joey Merlino slipping as much as it is a mere slip of the tongue. Joey was speaking off the top of his head in a fast paced interview with Vlad. Joey never stated that he was in the mafia or uttered the words Cosa Nostra. Tell me that you are in the mafia without telling me that you are in the mafia. Get it? In the words of the early 21st century poet 50 Cent, I try not to say nothing the DA might want to play in court. Let's be honest. Joey is a funny guy and he has great jokes. But why are we really captivated by him? It's the fascinating story of his alleged mafia adventures. That's why we tune in. That's why you are watching this video right now. So YouTube, instead of playing gotcha with skinny Joey Merlino, just enjoy the ride. Joey Merlino. My father used to take us to the, the Latin casino. When Joey says his father, he's referring to Chucky Merlino. Let me tell you a little bit more about Chucky Merlino. Chucky Merlino was the alleged underboss of the Philadelphia Cosa Nostra family under his childhood friend, boss, Nicky Scarfo. As I go into further in another video, back in 1963, Merlino and Scarfo had an altercation in a Philadelphia diner that ended with Scarfo fatally stabbing a burly longshoreman named William Duggan. 
Scarfo ended up serving a six-month prison term for that. As I go further into in yet another video, back in the day, Chucky Merlino was meeting with members of the Pagans Outlaw Motorcycle Club. Chucky didn't like the way the negotiations were going, so Chucky rammed his car into a Pagan on his motorcycle, injuring the outlaw biker. There's a rumor that Nicky Scarfo demoted Chucky from underboss back down to captain because of his alcoholism. Whatever the case, Chucky Merlino was convicted in 1988. He was a stand-up guy. He never ratted. And Chucky Merlino ended up dying in a Fort Worth prison in 2012 at the age of 73. The Latin Casino. Okay. Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Had, okay. I've seen everybody there. Diana Ross. Lou Rawls. Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Teddy Pendergrass. Tom wow. Jones. But Sinatra used to go a lot. For nearly two decades, the Latin Casino in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, stood as an emblem of glamour and excitement nestled along Route 70. From the 1960s through the 70s, the Latin Casino called itself the showplace of the stars, and the stars could fill the heavens. From Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Diana Ross, to Donna Summer, Ray Charles, Sammy Davis Jr., and Liza Minnelli. The Latin was the hottest, most star-studded nightclub between New York City and Miami Beach. Don Rickles, my dream guy, and I'll see him soon, live at the Latin Casino. I think I'd better call in my reservation now. It wasn't Latin, nor was it a casino, but rather a mecca for superstars and audiences alike. Mixed with the glitz and glamour was a history of tragedy. 17-year-old singer Brenda Lee broke her neck during a performance at the Latin. Lee was forced to cancel the last six days of her engagement and spend the rest of the week in the hospital. However, Lee recovered in time to graduate from high school. That must have been one hell of a performance. In 1975, iconic singer Jackie Wilson suffered a massive heart attack on stage at the Latin while singing the hit Lonely Teardrops. Wilson fell into a coma, leaving a lasting shadow on the nightclub. In 1969, Diana Ross and the Supremes were booked for two weeks at the Latin. Ross broke her contract and stalked off at the start of the engagement after her pet dogs, Tiffany and Lil Bit, died after eating rat poison pellets that were scattered around the nightclub. The Latin Casino had become one of Frank Sinatra's favorite performance spots by the mid-70s. Sinatra played 15 shows at the Latin from April 29th to May 8th, 1977, with Russ Miller conducting his orchestra and comedian Pat Henry opening. Most of Sinatra's days in Cherry Hill were spent palling around with his entourage across Route 70 at Garden State Park Racetrack. But what made the Latin Casino so special? It wasn't just the star-studded performances, but also the intimate atmosphere and familial hospitality. The Latin Casino wasn't just a venue, it was a home for performers, where they were treated with warmth and respect. Multi-night engagements were the norm, allowing artists like Frank Sinatra to establish enduring connections with the venue and its patrons. From lavish dressing rooms to gourmet meals, no expense was spared in creating an unforgettable experience for both performers and guests. Screen legend Marlene Dietrich transformed from Hollywood to Cabaret, mesmerizing audiences during her performances at the Latin. As the 1970s progressed, the Latin casino faced challenges from legal issues to changing entertainment landscapes. The rise of Atlantic City's casinos and the decline of Cherry Hill's glamour led to the Latin casino's closure in 1978, marking an end of an era. The Latin casino. I don't know who the fuck wanted to see Sinatra. I was 12. I had to wear a suit. I had a blue velvet suit on. So we had a table. We went one night. It was me, my mother, my father, my sister, Salvi, his mother, Phil Testa, Al, uh, Salvi's mother. We had the table dead front in the center. Let me tell you about everyone that Joey's referring to here. He's talking mostly about the Merlino family and the Testa family. Let me tell you about these two very intertwined families. Salvatore A. Testa, known as Salvi, was one of a group of second-generation Philadelphia Mafia princes, who among them was thought to be first in line to the Philly Cosa Nostra throne. However, Salvi's bloodline was star-crossed. His father, Philly Mafia boss, Philip the Chicken Man Testa, would be blown to pieces on his front porch, as described in the Bruce Springsteen song, Atlantic City. 
The young prince and capo regime, Salvi Testa, would later be betrayed by his closest friend and shot twice in the back of the head. Salvi Testa was born on March 31st, 1956 in Southwest Philadelphia. Salvi was the son of former Philadelphia Cosa Nostra family boss, Philip the Chicken Man Testa, an heir apparent to the throne. Salvi Testa's mercurial rise in the Philly family was later to be sinisterly extinguished by Nicodemo Scarfo. Scarfo, known as Little Nicky, orchestrated Salvi Testa's murder, snuffing out the promising career of the young, handsome, and capable Capo regime. The violent history of the Testa family was deeply rooted. Salvatore's father, Philip Testa, the chicken man, took the helm as the family boss after the murder of Angelo Bruno in March 1980. Bruno's death triggered a brutal internal war within the family, pitting factions loyal to Harry Riccobini against Scarfo, who controlled the family's operations in Atlantic City. Salvatore Testa, inducted as a made man in June 1980, found himself entangled in the volatile power struggle. The murder of his father, Philip, the chicken man Testa, in 1981, further fueled the family's internal conflicts. Scarfo ascended to Philly family boss, promoting his childhood friend, Salvatore Chucky Merlino, Skinny Joey Merlino's pop, to underboss. Salvi Testa inherited his father's loan sharking operations, quickly earning a reputation as a high-earning, capable mafioso. Salvi Testa's life was marred by violence, surviving a shotgun attack in 1982, orchestrated in retaliation for the attempted killing of Harry Riccobini. However, internal tensions within the crime family escalated when Testa broke off his engagement to Chucky Merlino's daughter in 1984. Her name is Maria. This is Skinny Joey Merlino's sister. Although Skinny Joey Merlino has disputed this, pointing out that his sister Maria and Salvi were already broken up at the time that Salvi called off the wedding. Whatever the case, Scarfo felt threatened by Salvi Testa's ambition and growing popularity and sanctioned a hit on Salvi, setting the stage for the brutal murder of the handsome young mafia prince on September 14, 1984. On that dark day, Salvi's best friend, Joe Pungitor, lured him into an ambush in the back room of the Something Sweet candy store in South Philadelphia. As Pungitor chatted with Salvi, Salvatore Wayne Grande pulled a gun from beneath the cushions of a couch, skulked behind Salvi, and pumped two slugs into the back of Salvi's head. Grande shot Salvi one more time for good measure. Salvi Testa's hogtied remains were found on the side of a dirt road in Gloucester Township, New Jersey. The aftermath of this treacherous murder would start the violent, downward spiral of the Philadelphia Mafia family under little Nicky Scarfo. Salvi Testa's funeral was attended by 350 mourners on September 20th, 1984 at St. Paul's Catholic Church in Philadelphia's Italian Market section. The funeral brought a tragic end to the superstar era of the Testa family in the Philadelphia Cosa Nostra. The Latin Casino. Sinatra used to go a lot. They had like a comedian open up, whatever. Now he's coming on singing, you know, just slow yeah. song. I fall asleep. I'm on my arms on the stage, I guess. Fucking out cold. He yeah. wakes me up. He said, what am I boring you? He said, what am I boring you? I said, no, nah, no. Nah. Can you imagine Joey sitting in the front row as a kid wearing a blue, blue velvet suit, falling asleep, and Frank Sinatra reaches down and pinches you on the cheek? And it's like, what an existence, man. What a life here. Then another time I was eating a shrimp cocktail there, like a lemon. I went, I got the lemon flew in the stage. Everybody was dressed up, suit, tie. I didn't want to wear one. A 12-year-old yeah. kid wants to wear a suit. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody, my, they always got dressed. That was the best place. You name it, we sold them. They all came here. There was no casino. And they had the best Chinese food and regular food way before Atlantic oh, okay. City. Okay, so that's what Atlantic it was. City closed, it probably buried them. Yeah. But we used to go, me, Philip Narducci, we used to go see every show. Yeah. It was the best. We had that's, the that's great. As a, young had a table, kid. like in, we had dead center front row. Skinny Joey Merlino mentions Philip Narducci, and he mentions Chicky Narducci. Let me tell you a little bit about these guys. Frank Chicky Narducci was born in South Philly in 1933 to Italian immigrant parents. Narducci's initiation into the realm of crime commenced at a young age, 
when he became a trusted soldier and driver for the Philadelphia crime family. However, the landscape shifted dramatically with the assassination of Angelo Bruno, orchestrated by Antonio Caponegro. The murder of Bruno paved the way for Chicky Narducci's close friend Peter Casella's ascension as underboss. It was under this new leadership that Narducci and Casella forged a dangerous rebellion against Bruno's successor, Philip Chicken Man Testa. Their defiance culminated in a chilling act of violence on March 15, 1981, when Testa fell victim to a nail bomb that was planted by Casella and Narducci's cohorts. This murder was immortalized in the Bruce Springsteen song Atlantic City. The repercussions of the assassination of Testa were far-reaching and ominous, setting the stage for further turmoil within the Philly criminal underworld. Tragically, Narducci's own demise mirrored the ruthless brutality inherent in this world. On January 7, 1982, as Chicky Narducci stepped out of his car outside his Philadelphia residence, Salvi Testa confronted him. With a chilling calmness, Salvi Testa uttered Chicky Narducci's name, granting him a fleeting moment to register the face of his assailant before a fatal shot rang out, sealing Chicky Narducci's fate. Chicky's assassination stood as a poignant symbol of the bloody power struggles that engulfed Philadelphia during a notorious Philly mob war. Amidst the chaos and carnage, Narducci's life and death epitomized the dark allure and perilous stakes of the criminal underworld, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of Philadelphia's crime history. You have heard Skinny Joey Merlino mention the name of Philip Narducci many times. Phil and Joey were childhood pals. Philip Narducci, a former alleged made man in the Philly Cosa Nostra family, spent more than half of his life in prison and has been accused by investigators of participating in at least three notorious gangland slayings, including the 1985 hit on Frank Frankie Flowers D'Alfonso. A jury convicted Philip Narducci of that murder in 1989, but the verdict was overturned on appeal and a second trial ended in acquittal. After his release from prison on racketeering charges in 2012, Narducci went straight. In 2019, Phil Narducci would get set up in a BS loan sharking case and get sentenced to a year in prison. Nowadays, Phil Narducci lays low and is the empresario of his gastro pub, Chicks, on Washington Avenue. Of the old school crew of Nicky Scarfo, Phil Testa, Chicky Narducci, and Chucky Merlino, Chicky Narducci was the richest and best businessman of them all. They all made money in real estate, but Chicky Narducci made a fortune. As I have mentioned before, the next generation of these families, Salvi Testa, Phil Narducci, and Joey Merlino, were privileged and wealthy kids. Some would even say spoiled. This is a fascinating and macabre photo that is indicative of the ultraviolence that distinguished the Philly Cosa Nostra family as one of the most brutal. Of the men standing in this photo, Chicky Narducci killed Philip Testa. Then Salvi Testa killed Chicky Narducci. Finally, Nicky Scarfo killed Salvi Testa. That's great. Chicky had a table like in we had dead center front row. So they had dead center front row. Now remember about these guys, Skinny Joey, Philip Narducci, Salvi Testa. These kids were pretty wealthy and privileged. You know, they're from South Philly, and that's kind of a hard scrabble kind of neighborhood. But these kids came up privileged. Me and Philip, Phil had Bank Street Five. I think the Skinny Joey Merlino was referring to Philip Narducci's club, the Five Spot on Bank Street. But I'm not totally sure. So if a viewer has some more information on this for me, I would appreciate it. It's, it's an, I think it's the Five Spot nightclub. It's a pretty famous spot on Bank Street. And he's talking about how he runs into Sinatra there. But if anybody has any more conclusive stuff on that, please hit me up or put it in the comments. Phil had Bank Street 5 and Sinatra came here one night to eat. So we came over there. And he was in there with his wife, I think Jilly, because he just performed it at the Latin. All right, let me tell you a little bit more about Frank Sinatra and Jilly. Frank Sinatra and Jilly Rizzo. Jilly and Frank. Jilly Rizzo was an enormous man and Frank Sinatra's closest friend and aide. Jilly was a native New Yorker who once had dreams of becoming a professional boxer. His night spot, 
Jilly's on 52nd Street in Manhattan was Frank Sinatra's favorite watering hole. As Sinatra put it, Jilly could clean up real good, but those who knew Jilly well knew that he was a real tough guy and could dish out violent retribution to those who offended him or Frank. Jilly had deep mafia connections to Sam Giancana, Joe Fischetti, Joey Gallo, and various heavyweights in the Gambino crime family. Phil had Bank Street 5, and Sinatra came here one night to eat. So we came over there, and he was in there with his wife, I think Jilly, because he just performed it at the Latin. And it was, we were in there at one in the morning. He was bombed. Yeah. And he's walking out, he looked at his watch, and he pinched my cheek. He's like, what the f*** are you doing up this late? It was like <laughs> yeah. 1.30 in the morning. Yeah. I was big. It's common when you come up in this era as an Italian kid to get your cheeks pinched especially if you're a boy by like older guys like frank sinatra every time he sees joey it seems like he's pinching his cheek this is the second time joey said frank sinatra saw him and pinched his cheek the first time was over at the uh, latin casino when he fell asleep on stage <laughs> we woke him up am i boring you and this time he's over at the uh, bank street five and he's pinching his cheek again yeah he was good sinatra that's he was the best the latin casino that yeah. was the best place to see a show they had every we seen everybody there whoever was like the casinos got yeah. now they had there wasn't no Casino. Wow. Then that's Atlantic crazy. City. It was in Cherry Hill. There's no yeah. casinos in Cherry Hill. Then Atlantic City got the gamble. This is in the 70s, 75. We've seen Frankie Valley there a million times. Uh, you name it, we've seen him there. And we had the best seats. That, that, no, it was good. Can you imagine the list of stars that, that skinny Joey Merlino and everybody who hung out at the Latin Casino got to hang out with and see? Billy Luna. Please subscribe to the Billy Luna channel and like the video. Thank you.